Good morning, everyone. 7.54 on your Wednesday morning. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Brain stimulation. It's being used at the Alberta Children's Hospital to help improve brain function in children who've had a stroke or who have cerebral palsy. But this brain stimulation is also being used to help train surgeons. Here to tell us all about it is pediatric neurologist Dr. Adam Curtin. Good morning to you. Thank morning. you so much for being here. Happy to be here. So first of all, tell us about the work that you're doing with this brain stimulation when it comes to children. Sure. So uh, we have a program at the Children's Hospital and we use this technology called non-invasive brain stimulation to try to understand uh, young brains that have had an injury like a stroke at birth, which happens a lot, and also to try to help that brain to learn faster or work better because these kids all have cerebral palsy, they all have physical disabilities and we're looking for new ways to try to help them function better. Right. And you've already done some research that shows that this really is helping. Yeah. In fact, we've uh, had the program now coming up for 10 years, and uh, we still don't know all the answers, but we're making lots of progress. We run some clinical trials. We have some, some new treatments that are uh, seeming to show effect that uh, kids can use this technology to make faster gains when they're trying to learn new skills. Well, that's so exciting. So then the idea came up to do this, so to use this same technology and help train young surgeons, which is what we're seeing right here. Right. Yeah, so the young man who you can see in the video there is uh, uh, Patrick, and he's, uh, he was a PhD student of mine. He's now a medical student himself. And together we had this idea, of, um, we, we knew that this brain stim could, could help your hand learn a skill faster. Mm -hmm. And then we realized there were other applications for that. And uh, we also, I, I work with, teach lots of medical students and I work with surgeons. And, and uh, what we know is uh, it's very hard to become a surgeon. It's very hard to learn these, these manual tasks. And the stimulation uh, seems to be able to enhance the brain's ability to do that. And so we thought we should test and see using a simulator, like you can see in the video, uh, could we help trainees, uh, maybe who want to be surgeons, could we help them acquire these skills faster by using the brain stimulation? Yeah, I mean, you're seeing here in the video, it is such precise work. Mm -hmm. And quite clearly, you have to do it, you know, and not make mistakes. That's <laughs> right. right. Because you're yeah. dealing with, you know, young children and brains here. Right. Well, and it's, I think it's true for all surgeons. And the uh, complexity of surgery is increasing. Uh, the training hours that surgical residents get now have been cut back due to work hour restrictions and um, so that combination of things is making it harder than ever for young surgeons to, to gain these really fine motor skills in their hands that let them become you know, the best possible surgeon they could be. And that almost certainly translates into the outcomes for the patients. Obviously, that if you were having surgery, you would want your surgeon to have the best possible skills in their hands. So, so this is the idea here. Could we get in there early in their training and, and stimulate their brain a bit while they're trying to acquire these skills um, so they could be ultimately become better surgeons down the road. Wow, this is fascinating, yeah. fascinating research, which is all part of this N3 lab that you've set up. That's right. So yeah, N3 is the non-invasive neurostimulation network, which is uh, based at the UFC. In fact, it goes across the whole University of Calgary. Um, it was set up through the Cummings School of Medicine and the Hoshkiss Brain Institute. And this is one of what are now dozens of studies where we're sharing all of this non-invasive brain stimulation technology across dozens of different labs and research ideas, different patient populations uh, to try to use the technology to understand brains better that have any number of conditions and then try things like this. Maybe we can massage or, or modulate the brain to help uh, improve a particular function or, or disability. Well, regardless, it is fascinating research right across the board. Dr. Curtin, thank you so much for being here and telling us all about it. My pleasure.